Welcome to the first episode of our November series, everyone. This month, we're doing things a little bit different because scheduling feels nearly impossible lately, and we're not even at the holidays yet. Mm -hmm. Um, But we had a unique opportunity to do something fun. And by we, I mostly mean Ryan. Um, (laughs) I suggested it. I came up with the idea, so I'll take Mm -hmm. a little bit of credit there. Um, Ryan sat down with three separate designers at a catacon this year and recorded a series of spotlight episodes for this month. We are starting off with Identico uh, in today's episode with designer Sean Rourke, a.k.a. Mallow, to learn about the cyberpunk Western mix of a game and um, to get into character creation for you all. Before we get to all of that, though, uh, Ryan, would you tell us what's up in the call to action? Absolutely. After the episode, join us back here for, uh, I guess, my thoughts about the game. (laughs) Because yeah. Amelia was not there. Uh, and to talk a bit about the recording in person experience uh, from at the convention. Uh, we'll also be going over the normal episode close, closer stuff, uh, information about our Patreon, and other happenings on the network. Until then, enjoy the episode, everyone. Welcome to a special bonus episode of Character Creation Spotlight, everybody. In this segment, we are shining the light on some current or up-and-coming games to keep an eye out for. I am one of, and your only host, Ryan, and today I am live at a Catacon 2023 in a private room, welcoming Sean, aka Mallow, from Identico. To talk about Identico... A cyberpunk and kind of Wild West role-playing game that I'm really excited to hear about. So, Sean, welcome to Character Creation Cast. Really great to have you here with us. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. Uh, can you go ahead and start us off uh, with telling us, telling the audience a bit about yourself, your pronouns, what sort of projects you have going on right now? Um, I usually go by uh, Mallow online um, uh, with he, they pronouns. Mm-hmm. Most of what I'm doing these days is writing Identico. Um, okay. it's, it's turned into a little bit of my full-time job. Mm-hmm. Um, we produce, uh, live streams every week as well. So there's a bit of writer, creator, producer that's happening, uh, w- with all of the work that we're doing. Oh, okay. So yeah. very cool. So since this is an abridged format, uh, of our normal format, mm-hmm. uh, we're going to be sticking to the highlights of the system and, and have a special focus on character creation. So without further ado, how about we find out about what this game is all about what's in a game so it's a it's a as you kind of said at the top of the show it's got it's got it's roots in the old school sort of cyberpunk yeah you know, feeling with a lot of you know big mega cities corporations running you know the neon and, and sort of wet noir that happens in those kind of cities yeah uh, but we also have a setting outside of the city that's meant for what what you were kind of saying, sort of the Wild West, or as I sort of explained to everybody, is is like Mad Max meets Fallout. Okay. Um, in the lore of the game, there was an attack on America that has kind of split it in two. Oh, and in yeah. the middle of it, there's this large radiated zone called the Scar. Ooh. Um, that's what's kind of caused everybody to retreat into these big mega cities. But yeah. then there were a lot of these people that really felt like they they just couldn't put up with corporate control. They just couldn't deal with it. You know, um, they had prepped for some of these kinds of things and they were just ready for anything that came about. Okay. And so they've, they're now living inside of these settlements and all of these kinds of different areas and just trying to kind of make their way in the world. Oh, that's pretty cool. And it was always sort of born out of like watching things like Blade Runner and reading things like Neuromancer and and all these, Mm -hmm. these, you know, really foundational cyberpunk, you know, pieces of art. I always wondered what, what was happening outside of the cities? Like, Oh yeah. Like what if somebody just didn't want to do that? Like what was yeah. the point? <laughs> um and you know, it wasn't like Alien where they went off to to space or something like mm-hmm. that, but there had to be other people living in other places around the world. You would think so, yeah. And, and so that's kind of where the the sort of Wild West sort of piece that came along with with the game 
which really does kind of throw people for a loop because they see, you know, the tagline cyberpunk role playing game and stuff, and mm-hmm. then we throw that at them, and they a lot of people tend to go, oh, oh, yeah, and and kind of dive into it from there so yeah that's really cool uh so we've got the cyberpunk uh and then the outside of the city portions uh in a future uh like how far in the future are we talking and then also what can characters do in this game so it's set in 2099 okay so not too distant future right but distant enough where we can take some liberties with some of the science and some of the uh, work that's happening, you know, in mm-hmm. there. So we can create things like Element 121 that can power things, and we don't okay. necessarily have to worry about gas and, and certain things like that. Um, one of the things that, like, a lot of characters, it, Identico actually means identity in okay. Esperanto. So mm. the whole game is built around the character and what their identity is in the rest of the world. Right. Um, They don't get, you don't get experience points as a character. You get identity points, Oh. which that turns into a form of social currency that you can actually spend to, you know, get yourself into and out of tricky situations if you want to. Mm -hmm. Um, So, you know, as you gain levels, you also gain notoriety and uh, a reputation. Okay. So you can't do the same jobs at levels, you know, you start at level zero. Yeah. You can't do the same jobs at level zero through four so that you do at like levels 10 through 20. Right. Uh, Cause you're going to get caught or you're going to get known. Uh, and so the mechanics of the game and things really reward you for, you know, finding ulterior ways of finding um, solutions to matters. Yeah. You get a follower or some things like that as you go through the game. Mm-hmm. Um, it really kind of pushes you into a little bit more of the role of, uh, the leader, the hero, or maybe an anti-hero in certain oh, ways. Very nice. So what do we need then to play a game of Identico? Um, you can play with a standard, you know, seven set of the polyhedral dice. Mm-hmm. You don't need anything else to kind of go. It's a D20 based system, but it's what we kind of call an active D20 based system. So okay. a lot of the roles and things like that, unless you're doing something against an inanimate object, mm-hmm. most of the time, that's going to be an opposed role. Right. So, for instance, if I do a deceit check with you, you would roll your intelligence, I would roll my deceit skill, and we would compare those two. And that helps oh. us understand, you know, especially when you think about, when we think about, like, cyberpunk and stuff like that, you can think of, like, maybe, like, boardrooms kind of like we're in yeah. here. Like, you might have to negotiate when you're at level 10s and stuff like that. And mm-hmm. those negotiation is verbal combat. Oh, yeah, yeah. And so... That's like, you know, those skill checks are almost like offensive and defensive mm-hmm. ways of negotiating. Um, and I was never a person that really believed in the magical D20 role. And then that person just automatically believes you. Mm-hmm. Like we have a success criteria of uh, on the on our game runner screens and stuff like okay. that. That shows you, you know, if it if it passes only by a little bit, then like give them the bare minimum. If yeah. it passes by a little bit more, give it to them a little bit more, you know flying success or flying failures and yeah. that 20s and ones and things always come into play but it's just in a way to kind of like bring about that sense of role play and that sense mm-hmm. of character and identity yeah that's really interesting because like even in D, a lot of dms that i've had experience with they have that sort of house rule unwritten mm-hmm. completely like i know the dc is 13 you just roll the 27 you're going to get something extra because that's a lot higher than that 13, right? Yes. And, and having that built into the game system is really smart. I think that's that's a, a great use of that. We, we tried to build the systems in a way to make it as GM-friendly as possible. Mm-hmm. Um, we've been lifelong game runners and things like that. We know how hard it is to jump into a new system. Yeah. We know how it, hard it is to get a group excited about a new system. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so we tried to take every bit of, you know, polish and magic that we could kind of pull together for it mm-hmm. and bring that in as such a way to make it as simple as possible for people to jump in. Oh, absolutely. Very cool. So what sort of characters can people make in this game then? So a lot, some of it is going to have your, your kind of standard uh, cyberpunk sort of tropes with it. Okay. You can make a hacker. Um, we call the, the generalist fighter a mercenary. Mm-hmm. Um, you can have an operative, which is uh, sort of your face mm-hmm. uh, for it. You can have a gutter punk. Uh, you can have a greaser, uh, which is sort of your tinkerer or your mechanic. They also tend to be the drivers to get in and out of oh, like okay. heists yep. and things like that. Um, you can have a Leo, which is uh, short for law enforcement officer, oh, okay. which works both within the wastes or within the city. So if you're right. in the city, 
you could work for the corporation or you could be a private detective. Mm-hmm. When you're out in the waste, you could be part of the marshals, which is like the only mm-hmm. l- it's the only real government organization left. Very uh, wild in America. West, that's what you're talking about there, right? Yeah. Or you could be a you know freelance bounty hunter, yeah, which is one of the characters that I tend to play in one of our live streams. Oh, interesting. Um, the outrider is the only character class that starts at least in the wastes. They okay. are the survivors. They are the ones that have meant to you know, really try to be in and out there. They have no, you know, chip, which is the way that people are tracked throughout the world. Okay. They are just off the grid from the start. Oh, very interesting. Um, the final class that we have is, is probably the one that people love the most, but it's the Rover. Oh yes. I, I, (laughs) when I played this game, that's what I played. So, so you're aware then too, but for folks that are listening, like the Rover is, is kind of think a little bit like the matrix you plug in mm-hmm. you know to a to a computer yep. um of some size so a lot of times it's it's no bigger really than a briefcase so it can be portable yeah but you kind of plug in matrix style and then your meat body just sort of slumps over mm-hmm. and your consciousness is now within this robot yeah um and the one that we give is sort of a a, a character piece to it is like a nine and a half foot walking robot so we kind of call them our walking tanks yeah they can absorb a lot of damage mm-hmm. um but they're also illegal for most people to own oh, so of for obvious reasons <laughs> um so like you kind of have to be really careful where, when you bring out that character so yeah. there's a bit of a give and take mm-hmm. to um the power structures within the game absolutely yeah and and you can technically be in two places at once but not at the same time yeah you can be a really you can be a really uh helpful character especially if it's going to be a combat heavy kind of fight Mm -hmm. um but your meat body is still somewhere usually close to the fight so now your team has to take care of you yeah in some capacity Mm -hmm. uh to make sure you don't get hurt (laughs) absolutely yeah i i I think i was stuck in the van uh during during my excursion Uh, a lot of people put them in the van and mm -hmm. then dramatically the raw busts out the back of it with doors flying Uh open and things like that (laughs) exactly exactly uh well I I would love to go through a session zero uh for this game uh for a group of two mm-hmm. if we could let's make some people so uh what do we need to do first so there's a couple different ways that you can can go about making the character mm-hmm. um the first thing that you always kind of have to do is you choose a background okay and so there are three backgrounds in in the game so the first one is obviously a corp. Mm-hmm. If you want to be within the city and either work for a corporation or have formally worked for a corporation, um, you have ties to that world. Right. Um, the difference is you, you get a little bit more starting money. You get a little bit more. Your pa- you know pockets are padded a little bit. Your yeah. skills are done more in the intelligence or charisma kind of categories. Mm-hmm. Um, you're a little bit more educated sure. typically because you're growing up in the city. Okay. The other background that we have then is the fringer. So – it's our sort of sideline for the fringes of society. Mm-hmm. Um, you get way less starting money because you're not backed by a corporation mm-hmm. from there. Um, but you get more skills in like stamina and determination. So you're mm. a little bit more rugged because you've been living out in some version of the streets yeah. and, you know, sometimes in the second layer of the city, that sort of thing. Okay. The last one is the grounder, which then is a lot of those people, like we're saying, that are are out in the wastelands and stuff like that. So Mm -hmm. the grounders all start with absolutely no money because Mm. everything out in the wasteland is usually bartered, uh, but they also don't have any chips. So they don't, they're not tracked or anything like that for. Okay. Um, They'll get bonus skills uh, in any attribute category, because as you can imagine, you're going to have to have a lot of different skills to survive out there. So Mm -hmm. you have a little bit more flexibility with the starting character. Okay. Is it, is it generally, uh, Groups will decide on one together to kind of be like, well, let's all be corpse, let's all be fringe, or maybe like most corpse, maybe one or two fringe. I think a lot of times it's they kind of decide on the setting they want to start in. Okay. Um, they either decide they want to start in the wastes or they want to start in the cities. Okay. And so when they start in the cities, that's usually the difference of between the corp and the fringe. Right. Um, you might have those that still have corporate ties and mm-hmm. stuff like that. And you might have some that have the fringe ties and things. Okay. So they can intermingle. Yeah. Um, I've had entire groups that all want to be fringers and stuff mm-hmm. like that. And that's a totally great way to play. And yeah. then I've got people, I've got an entire 
there's a group that is just south of Seattle where we're from mm-hmm. that has made an entire Discord server that is their company that they have made within the Identico universe. Oh, amazing. And the mods are like the sea level people and oh. there are, there's <laughs> every new person that joins starts at level 0 yep. and they've just really taken on the whole kind of persona and personality of like creating a company and running it. Oh, that's really in the, cool. in the game world. So I like that. Yeah, it's it's something to behold. <laughs> yeah, that's really cool. So so say we were going to be playing a game uh, together with uh, an imaginary GM mm-hmm. uh, running us. What sort of setting should we should we do? I I I I like any of the portions of this setting. Let's 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 take it with a little bit more of the the sort of like standard cybernetics. So let's stay in the okay. city. All right. Um, do you want to do on the fringe, or would you want to be with the corp? Um, let's see. I wonder, like. Gosh, do you need a chip to get the cybernetics? Is I guess is the question. Or you don't. Cybernetics is kind of one of those places that um, there's different classes to cybernetics. Mm-hmm. Do not get too far into the weeds of the of the piece, but there's different classes of cybernetics. Yeah, and much like it kind of is today, you're you're not anybody who's anybody kind of thing if you don't have the highest grade of cybernetics and flashy kinds of things. Yeah. Right that. But your base level sort of cybernetics you can get from street docks and things okay. anywhere in, in most of the cities. Interesting. I'm wondering, uh, like, uh, what a grounder would look like in the city. Mm-hmm. Um, somebody that was from the wastelands that, like, somehow found their way into the city, mm-hmm. and now they're faking it till they make it. Basically, yep. I think that could be interesting. It's a very green acres, but in reverse. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. So I think I'm going to have a grounder for my background. How about yourself? Okay. Um, I'm probably going to take on a fringer Okay. Uh, from that side of it, because those two, it'd be really hard for a grounder and a corp to kind of coexist in a lot of ways, because yeah. um, corporations are almost like religions there. They don't, people don't tend to try to go against the corporations. Right. Uh, but a fringer might find, you know, solace when working with a, a grounder or somebody that's on the outside. Mm-hmm. Uh, maybe somebody could be running supplies back and forth, so they're getting things out of the city that they might need. Okay, they're bringing in like fresh food and stuff like that because most of the things in the city are synthetic. Yeah, but if you're coming from a major settlement, they might bring in, you know, different kind of pieces like that. Oh them. yeah, that's true. Very cool. Okay, so we got our backgrounds. So the next thing you do is uh, you kind of want to determine your attributes. So mm-hmm. there are six attributes, um, stamina, strength, agility, intelligence, determination, and charisma. Okay. Um, now, I, myself, um, I prefer to roll for these, mm-hmm. um, but we do have a variant where you can do point by if you want to, like, if you've just got that like perfect character in mind and you know exactly where you want to put the stats <laughs> and everything like that. Um, you know, I, I, I like the randomness of rolling yeah. because I've made and played so many characters throughout the years uh, that I want to get challenged and see like what comes up. And mm-hmm. if I, you know, if I'm rolling a low int character for instance and stuff like that, it's like, okay, that's a little bit of a challenge to play maybe for something like that. Yeah. I- you give me an option for rolling, mm-hmm. and I'm going to take it. Okay. So, so what? How how do we roll for our attributes? Okay. So the average attribute scores uh, in the game uh, is about 14. So okay. you roll 46, um, and then you you can assign them uh, as you see fit. Okay. What I tend to like to do again to challenge myself is I just go top to bottom and see what happens. Sure. Um, so we roll six times. Mm-hmm. And uh, and then we'll just go from there. Yeah. So we'll roll mm-hmm. intelligence first. Sure. Okay. I'll see what I get. Um, is it four d six and keep all, or four d six and drop? Oh wow. Okay. That's good because I rolled really bad. <laughs> That's <a> nine. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So next up on the character sheet is agility. Okay. Eleven. A little better. Then we go for strength. Okay. I am my dice are not liking me oh, at no. all. That's another eleven. That's fine. <laughs> then we got determination. All right. Little better. Twelve. <laughs> <laughs> 
All right, let's roll for stamina now. All right. That's a little better. Um, 14. Okay. I, I'm an average in something. <laughs> Charisma. 12. Okay. So I'm very below average in a lot of a uh, lot of this situation. There's a lot of there's gonna be a lot of minus ones on there. <laughs> yeah, I can imagine. <laughs> but sometimes that can be some of the more fun characters to play. Mm-hmm. Is you're 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 rolling at some disadvantages on some of these yeah. things. And, um, and it feels like this is a person that's kind of been like down on their luck mm-hmm. in, in the wastelands and they're like, I'm not gonna survive out here. Maybe I can bumble my way through surviving in the city. Yeah. Right? That's interesting. Okay. So if you were having a character as well, uh, where would your stats be lying? Um, I tend to roll uh, higher on intelligence and higher on agility. Mm-hmm. Um, for those two, I don't need something that's like super strong. Um, I tend to be pretty average with determination. Mm-hmm. Um, and then a little bit lower in stamina and probably middle of the road in charisma. Okay. Um, but because charisma checks and things aren't automatic, like charm spells, for instance, Mm -hmm. um, when I can, it depends on if I'm wanting to play a little bit of more of a face kind of character, or Mm -hmm. if I'm trying to play a little bit more of a, um, you know, a little bit more of a a standard gutter punk kind of character. Mm -hmm. Um, which I think in, in sort of our scenarios, we're kind of doing with it. You'd probably run into some gutter punks yeah who are you know who are a little bit more accepting of outsiders because they are trying to uh actually create a little bit of a commune and things like that within the city okay so they might be in sort of the the sort of second layer of angel city for instance like you may have come right. you know out from you know the the southwest into angel city which is sort of a amalgamation of la and mm-hmm. the surrounding area that's kind of been built up and made oh, up okay. this, this huge sort of mega city nice um, but yeah, so we'd probably be a little bit higher on int and a little bit higher on charisma because they're needing to talk their way through things. They're needing to, mm-hmm. you know, rally people around them and they're not going to be the ones that are going to try to necessarily get into a firefight right. as much, um, if they can help it. So they're going to okay. try to talk their way out of things as much as they can. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Very cool. Okay. What's next then? So, uh, next as we kind of go through, so your initiative is all based upon uh, your agility. Um, you are looking at, uh, with your agility, you had a... What, an 11. You? Okay, so you'd have a minus one to your initiative. Of course. <laughs> um, your perception is all uh, based on... Um, your perception is all based upon your intelligence. Okay. So... Um, that's a nine. Okay. Currently. So that's a minus two. Minus two. I'm doing great so far. <laughs> <laughs> and then your speed is your just your base agility. Mm-hmm. Uh, and if you're not wearing armor, then it's times four. Oh. Every level of armor that you go up in, mm-hmm. you multiply it by one less. So if it's in light armor, you would multiply it by three. Medium armor, you multiply it by two. Heavy mm-hmm. armor, it's just your base. That's as fast as you can go in feet per turn. Okay. So I got 44. Mm-hmm. Um, and then your health that's next in the, in sort of the character sheet, Mm -hmm. everybody starts, if you have no cybernetics whatsoever, everybody starts with 25 hit points, uh, per area. And so there's the, the areas are the head, the body, uh, both arms and both legs. And they all are assigned a number, um, based on, so if you get hit, uh, the person that's attacking you rolls a D 12 and that determines the location of where they hit with like a gunshot or something like that. Okay. Um, there are called shots in the game, um, mm-hmm. but instead of, say, like a, a standard pistol is 2d20, mm-hmm. and you roll 2d20 two, two in there, and then the person would roll the defensive roll, mm-hmm. um, and you would compare each of the numbers to that. So it's each d20 counts as a shot from a, mm-hmm. uh, a firearm. Okay. Um, and so uh, if you try to do an aimed shot, you only get one shot, mm-hmm. and a lot of weapons can't be aimed because it's like bigger guns that sort of right. thing so uh you kind of have to just take the spray and pray approach sometimes mm-hmm. absolutely um, so but if you were to get you know body armor and things like that with you know some of the things you would um 
you would likely have to talk your way in through that mm -hmm. when you got into the city. You would work a job or two and try to find, right. you know, some body armor and things like that. Um, because you usually don't start with too many souls. Um, that makes sense. Um, or you're getting a loan from a friend or from a friend or something like that. You mm -hmm. get some armor. That's one way to sort of mitigate the the damage against you from there. Okay. Um, so then the next sort of piece to it then is your skills. Mm -hmm. um, and from a grounder's perspective, um, you wanted to you wanted to choose an outrider. Mm -hmm. So um, in the book, up in the classes section, we have sort of everybody's starting skills and everything like mm -hmm. that. Um, so if you are looking for like your primary attributes and stuff, the things you might want to put the most, uh, points in, we kind of tell you where to do that. Mm -hmm. But for an outrider, your starting skills are survival, um, salvaging, and then you have a choice of driving or animal handling. Mm. I think I'll go animal handling. Okay. Um, and then you get one of your choice. Which there is a list of a longer list of yeah uh, ones in the uh, in the book. Okay, let's see. Would there be a skill for? Um, I don't know. I don't know if they want. I want them to be deceitful or like, just like. I mean, maybe a little deceitful of sorts. Is there mm -hmm. is there like a, a there is a deceit skill? skill. Yeah, very good. I think I'll go with that then. Okay. So that's four of your starting uh, points. Mm -hmm. um, at the beginning, you get five plus your int modifier. Um, your int modifier, I think, is minus one? Minus two. Minus two. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, typically, what I do for most characters with that is just go, okay, if you got a minus with it, you just get your starting skills for now. Okay. Um, in the ways that kind of works with it for that is... Um, I don't like to subtract from the int modifiers and stuff like that because it usually, as you progress, you get two plus your int modifier. Mm -hmm. But two plus a minus two would give you nothing as you go for it. And mm -hmm. that's we know that that's not how life works. You do get smarter <laughs> as you yeah. go along. So usually what I do is I just drop the int modifier like that mm -hmm. uh, if it's a negative. Mm -hmm. um, if it's a positive, then obviously you're a little bit smarter than most other characters. Mm -hmm. You're going to learn you know, more skills and things like that as you go along. Okay. Uh, but I try not to to be too harsh on characters. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then, so the, the next kind of thing that you would look at, and this is all in one sheet per mm -hmm. character class in the book. Yeah. Um, but you would pick out some combat proficiencies. Mm -hmm. So think of this as the types of weapons and things that they might be uh, able to use. Mm. So you've got things like pistols, rifles, um, knives swords mm -hmm. uh that sort of thing that you can kind of pick up and work with okay i'm thinking let's see how many am i proficient with i guess you would be able to pick three three okay so for sure swords okay um and then pistols okay and then i'm gonna say is a sniper rifle a potential so rifles themselves rifle would be one perfect yeah. i'll take rifle um because i think they would be like one of the hunters mm -hmm. out in the out in the wastes i bet that's actually like a really good way to kind of play that mm -hmm. yeah a good hunting rifle and stuff you can you could always kind of get your hands on something that's a little bit more beefy within the city but a mm -hmm. good hunting rifle with a scope or something like that yeah, yeah, yeah. would be a great kind of proxy to that mm -hmm. um Okay, so the next thing that you would kind of get stuck with, um, stuck in with, is uh, talents. Mm -hmm. So you get three talents to start. Um, and I'll kind of walk you through um, a little bit of the talents here. Um, as soon as I get to all of my talents, because <laughs> it's a list. Um, talents are sort of the icing on top. Mm -hmm. It's things that you would use to round out the back of background of your character. Okay. So, for instance, we have things like run and gun, mm -hmm. heavy armor master, medium armor master, uh, small arms master, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So, um, for instance, like heavy armor master is uh, you don't take as much of a penalty if you're using heavy armor. Mm. Um, now, the requ requisite to that is you need the 15 plus strength because you need right. to be able to like hoof that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, you know, battle masters, things like that. Um, 
But we have some other ones, though, that are like things like where it counts, where like once per encounter, you can find a weak spot in tech. Mm. So if you're trying to face off against a Rav or uh, a hover bike or a police car or something along those lines, Mm -hmm. you just have that like insight from seeing like how things work where you can just find that weak spot. Okay. um, And you do extra damage as you go up uh, in level. Um, So you use that kind of once per Mm -hmm. once per uh, uh, once per day. Okay. So you would do some extra damage. Nice. Um, one that is really good with like Leos and, and outriders and stuff like that is like tracking experts. So you're an expert at tracking things in the wastes. So you get bonuses, uh, on your survival skills and things like that Mm. while you're out there. Um, and then that obviously increases as you go up in character. Okay. I do like tracking expert. Um, and it sounds like some of these do have prerequisites. For that? Some do, some don't. Okay. Um, so I didn't want to like I didn't want to put everything with a prerequisite on there, but just the ones that that really, um, really need some. So like you're not going to be a minus two for strength and be a heavy armor master because mm-hmm. it's like, you know, a, a bean pole kind of person trying to put on like football gear. It just doesn't yep. work. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Um. So you can also take so there's tracking expert for the wastes, mm-hmm. and then there's bounty hunter in the city. Mm. Both of them do the same kind of thing but again it's just how you want to flavor your character Mm -hmm. it kind of feels like my character is probably a hunter Mm -hmm. of sorts and so good at tracking in the wastes and i think they've been starting to apply that skill set to the city Mm -hmm. now and and bounty hunter seems Mm -hmm. like a good yeah use of that skill the, the beauty of it is in, in our kind of piece is you're not locked into skills as you, as you go up, mm-hmm. you just get skill points to put anywhere you want to. Okay. Because as a character, you know, we, we almost had a classless system mm-hmm. in this, but we wanted to give a little bit of form and function to make it as simple as possible to kind of create a character. Right. Um, but then as your character evolves, as you bring in more story, you can put skills anywhere. There's hackers that have, driving skills there's mm-hmm. drivers that decided they wanted to start working you know with leos and learn some of the talents that go from there mm-hmm. um so there's a lot of things that you know for somebody like yourself if you're doing some hunting and things you might do something like uh, a talent called under arrest mm. where you can actually go and disarm an opponent you get you get a bonus to your grapples uh to try to subdue somebody oh. rather than just going for the lethal kind of yeah takedown. Uh, so you can disarm them, and that gives you a little bit of stuff in combat as well. I think that sounds pretty good. I'm getting a good judge of who this character is a bit now. I'll, I'll take under arrest as well for my third talent. Okay. Those are all really, like, for this kind of character, That's those are all really, really good mm-hmm. kind of choices to it. Um, And then the last thing kind of be is, is you kind of make sure and see, like, do you want cybernetics? to kind of start with and what other kind of equipment would you want to put into something like that right now i'm all for cybernetics for my characters um i wonder uh gosh it's like i'm I'm thinking like why did they come to the city right Mm -hmm. and i'm wondering if they had like something uh like maybe something wrong with like an eye or something Mm -hmm. like that that like I'm not going to be able to be a, a hunter or a tracker anymore if I lose my eye, right? right. Maybe there was an infection or, or something like that, right? Um, so so this character came to the city and kind of uh, maybe wormed their way into getting a cybernetic eye for mm-hmm. some favors. We have a perfect one for that then called the Watcher. Mm-hmm. It's a it's an eye replacement, um, and it it appears normal on the outside. Um, but it is able of recording up to like three hours of high def video, um, a ton of images, things like that. Uh, so if you're like tracking something or you may be doing like a, um, like a scope out mm-hmm. or something like that, and you want to be able to replay, you know, all the details and stuff like that as you're tracking something. Yeah. That's a great one to kind of pick up on. Okay. Um, what you could do later on as the character progresses is they have one that's called bullseye. It's mm. a restricted one though. Mm-hmm. Um, and so you've got to find it on the black market kind of thing. 
But the bullseye actually kind of really works uh, hand in hand to actually enhance your uh, firing ability. Mm -hmm. So it's a little bit kind of like uh, the bullseye character in Marvel Mm. in certain ways where you can like zoom in and it's a little bit enhancing to like some of the ways that you need to to fire and stuff like that. So from a a mechanics perspective, you get um, a bonus to your attacks as the the better Mm. the level of it. And there's categories uh, G through A. Okay. uh, In all cybernetics. Sure. Um, G is basically just like a replacement. Mm -hmm. And then everything from F on, you get a, a plus a die. Okay. So if you're doing a skill check, for instance, it's a D20 plus a D4, a D6, a D8, a D10, oh, that sort of thing. Very nice. So it still gives you a bit of that randomness uh, in there, mm-hmm. but without um, becoming too overpowered. It feels so kind of like different levels of bardic inspiration, like from D&D and stuff, right? A, a little bit, yeah. And, and we actually even have a talent called That's What I Call Leadership. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and so it's a little bit of that kind of thing where it's like, you know, you can slap somebody on the back and be like, okay, you need to re-roll that. Like, yeah, try again. That's pretty kind cool. of thing. So very cool. All right. What's next then? The next is you go shopping. Ooh. You decide what kind of equipment and things like that you want. Mm-hmm. Um, we give you um, in the book, we, we give you uh, some starting equipment and things like that that you can go with, but you don't necessarily have to keep that mm-hmm. depending on when you are coming into the game. Yeah. Um, you know, it's things like average clothes, coveralls, mechanics toolbox, mm-hmm. you know, the kits like a multi tool and electronics kits and things like that. Like all of those things usually mm-hmm. come into play. Um, you know, you can even have you can choose in, in from this one, right? Uh you get a set of medium armor if you mm-hmm. want to keep it. Um, but you also get a used truck, a motorcycle, or like a riding pack animal kind of thing mm. if you want to work. With, with some of those things. So how did you get to the city? Did you ride in on a truck? Did you come in on a motorcycle? Or? Yeah, I think, um, I wonder if this, if this would take place like, uh, a couple of years after getting established in the city. Right. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I came in by foot and, uh, got the cybernetic and did some favors, found out I was good at doing those favors. Mm-hmm. And then, uh, or, worked that into actually making money doing that Mm -hmm. and eventually got myself a motorcycle. There you go. So you would start with, with all of those, we'd start with all of that equipment. So you'd be somewhat established to kind of get going from there. Mm -hmm. Um, Then the next kind of thing that you would pick then um, is your weapon. So you start with a pistol or revolver Mm -hmm. uh, and then you get the choice of, of two others. Mm -hmm. So from your combat proficiencies, it sounds like you would get a sword and some sort of rifle. Yeah. From there absolutely yeah I, I think just like a starting with a basic hunting rifle right with mm-hmm. a with a moderate scope on it yes is kind of what i was thinking and i picture that's the one that i had out in the wastes right when i was hunting the the animals and stuff like that typically there's there's a company in our game called ins arms mm-hmm. it's actually out of the republic of texas which is ceded from america at this point right um but they have what's a an ih uh, 17 but they call it the hunter rifle mm-hmm um, so it's another one of those rifles that gets you two shots, um, but it does, you know, decent damage mm-hmm. from a decent, you know, far away uh, kind of place. And it's not too expensive either. So it would have been something that you could have either brought in from the waste with you mm-hmm. uh, or upgraded when you got there to where it's a nice like, you know, the INS stuff is a little bit easier to pick up in the okay. wastes because some of their stuff is restricted within the city. Right. For obvious reasons. Mm-hmm. That makes sense. Okay. The big question is, though, on your sword, mm-hmm. uh, is it katana, rapier, broadsword? Like, <laughs> I got to go with katana. Okay, good. <laughs> <laughs> most of the most of the damage and stuff like that, except for the broadsword, is a little bit more damage mm-hmm. with it. But um, katana comes with a one d eight plus strength. Okay, kind of piece. But it's you know it's the classic. It's yeah, the absolutely. So it's not the greatest in my hands, but. Mm-hmm. It looks cool. Yeah. And and I've used it to intimidate more than to actually hurt. Yes. That's that's actually a really good one. Yeah. Um, and then there's a couple there's a bunch of different pistols that you can get of different calibers and things that are pretty inexpensive in the game. Is there kind of one that you had in mind? Um I think something basic and reliable is all that all that this person cares about. Mm-hmm. Something that uh, in a pinch, if I need to, I can use this to yep. to get out of something. 
I would probably say they might have gotten like a 38 special then or something along those lines. Mm-hmm. Um, so a revolver style kind of thing, but um, you know, something with good ballistic damage, not too hard to carry around, mm-hmm. things like that. Absolutely. And and relatively, you know, inexpensive uh to get starting out with and stuff like that. Yeah, so. for sure. Um and then finally, because your character is sort of established, um, we can use the money portion uh, from the starting kind of character. Mm-hmm. So uh, roll me 1d10. Sure. Seven. Okay, so you would start with 700 souls in addition to the equipment and stuff mm-hmm. like that that you have. Um, a lot of times with Outriders, if you're going to be in the wastes, we would say sort of like as much of that with trade goods. Yeah. A lot of our characters end up having like junk shops and stuff like that, so they've got barter goods and things they could do. Mm-hmm. Um, but if you're going to be in the city, you got to have you got to have souls working for you. That so. makes sense. Okay, and that's as that's as easy as it is to to create the character. Oh, that's everything. That's everything. We put everything that you need on the character on the one sheet uh, from there. So very nice. The rest of the things that you kind of put uh, in there is is more of like how you want to describe the character. So mm-hmm. height, weight, their hair, their their age, yeah. hairstyle, things like that. Um, you know, that's all going to kind of be you know, really flavored for what you're mm-hmm. kind of looking for from there. But like Very from cool. a mechanics perspective, that's everything you need. Yeah. So I'm curious, uh, if we were going to be a duo in this, uh, what what sort of, uh, I guess, class would your character be? I'd be running gutter punk, probably. Okay. Um, probably a like pink mohawk kind Excellent. of kind of talker. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, probably uh, from probably some sort of musician that's trying to make it oh, perfect. in a lot of ways mm-hmm. um, that is trying to like really kind of establish themselves and maybe break out. Oh yeah. Uh, for that. But because you know, it's so hard to kind of get things in and out of there. Mm-hmm. Like he's got to work jobs just like everybody else. Yeah. So he's getting hired to do all sorts of, you know, escort or other types of, mm-hmm. kind of missions working alongside your character. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I'd like to, to think places. that like maybe we met, originally when i took a bodyguard position for just one of your events mm-hmm. or whatever like th- they'll just get whoever yeah. off the street to to be the bodyguard because you know I- i'm sure the corporations are like they're not big enough yet oh totally uh yeah, yeah, yeah. just but we need somebody you know the law says we need somebody whatever uh so we'll just hire this this person and it'll be fine I'd like to probably think too that we like met over a bar fight. Oh that yeah, that probably happened. <laughs> 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 you know, as well as the sort of the end of the night bar yeah. fight, and you kind of like look at each other after the fight, and you're like, eh, well, "I'll buy you a drink," you know. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Um, so I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna name my character because I kind of have to do that, uh, and um, I'm gonna go with the Derek Lancer. Oh, nice. Yeah. Derek Lancer meets Rico. Rico. Yeah. Amazing. <laughs> Very cool. Rico of the Soylent Greens. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they're they're made of people. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Spoilers for a movie from 50 years ago or something. Maybe 60 years. Maybe 60. Yeah, I did think back. I was like, I used to study that me- the movie. How long ago was that? Uh-huh. Oh, goodness. Uh huh. <laughs> if you haven't seen it, go see it and know that we spoiled it for you. <laughs> Enjoy. Amazing. Very cool. Um. So we just got a couple more questions left. Uh, for this. Uh, what was the process of developing some of these character creation mechanics? Um, hundreds of maybe even nearly a thousand times of helping people create characters at conventions. Oh wow. Um, we bring pre cons and things like that to the conventions, mm-hmm. but a lot of times people want to make their own character because it's a very personal sort of decision. Of course. Um, and what we needed to do uh was get the character creation down to a point where you could do it as in little time as possible. Yeah. I know a lot of people want to spend a ton of time on session zeros and things like that. Mm-hmm. Um, but for the majority of folks, I would probably say they don't have time to scroll over every tome everywhere. Mm -hmm. So you've got two different ways. You can take everything that we give you as a pre-generated sort of piece Mm -hmm. or, you know, working with your game runner, you can kind of eschew it and and do everything if you want to. But 
you know, time is so precious. We wanted to get it down to as simple as possible to get you started in the world. And as you grow into the world, because it doesn't take too long to get to like from level zero to level one, mm-hmm. then you can start making all of your choices. Once you get a feel for the game, once you get really kind of immersed in the story and in the world, mm-hmm. then you can start making a bunch of decisions where, yeah, you know, versus, you know, you've got backgrounds and feats and, 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 and flaws and all these kinds of things that, that, that can come up in a lot of other systems. Mm-hmm. Um, I wanted those to kind of come naturally throughout the, the piece. So, right. You know, it's a game about your identity. You as the player should define that identity. Mm-hmm. You know, if you want to use a random generator for that, totally go ahead. Like mm-hmm. challenge yourself if you want to like play different characters. Yeah. Like, totally fine. But I didn't want to open it up too much for people to have to go and play in a certain way. Right. Uh, if they didn't want to. Exactly. Yeah. Very cool. It seems like there is a ton of options, uh, at least of how to play this game. Yeah. I just, nice. I just wanted it to be as open as possible for mm-hmm. folks to do it. That's really cool. Um, yeah. So what inspirations did he draw upon then for the character creation mechanics? Um, a lot of it was we have, between myself and my co-writer, Alex, we have a huge library of every kind of game you can think of, going all the way back to, you know, AD&D, mm-hmm. uh, GURPS. Of course. You know, all of, the, <laughs> all of the classics, all the way through to today's things like you know, Lancer and mm-hmm. Morkborg and, you know, so the new versions of like Starfinder, Pathfinder, mm-hmm. all that kind of stuff. Um, and I really wanted people to be able to play some of the classics and stuff like that on like Friday night mm-hmm. and then roll in and play our game on like Saturday night. Oh, yeah. Without having to go get new dice, without having to necessarily rethink all of the abilities and stuff like that mm-hmm. in the world. Um there's just some, in my mind, some universal truths to how abilities and things go. Mm-hmm. Everybody's got their little tweak on them, and right. I think it works well for those systems and things. Like I think of like Dungeon Call Classics and stuff like that, where mm-hmm. they have, you know, the six attributes, but then they've only got a couple of ways of doing defense and right. stuff like that. Um, and I think it really works well for that system. Yeah. Um, but it still feels like it still feels familiar enough that it's like if you threw the DCC stuff in front of me right now, I'd be like, "Yes, rat catcher presence, let's go." Yep. <laughs> <laughs> let's make let's make a bunch of one HP peasants and see if they live, kind of uh-huh. thing. Um, because it's it's familiar and you know how to kind of like roll into it from there. Yeah. Um, and as a new game, it's so hard to kind of come in. You know, if you come back in with a bunch of oddball uh, mechanics and stuff like that, people aren't going to want to follow it and things like that. Right. Um, and for a game runner, this is performance art for us. Is mm-hmm. like we're trying to keep people engaged. And exactly. So, um, that's kind of the, the the thing that we were looking for for it. Very cool, wonderful. Uh, so, is there anything special coming up for Edetico? So we we actually just released um, a module called the Good Doctor. Okay. So imagine a little bit of like Resident Evil in a uh, abandoned sort of accursed uh, amusement park. Oh wow! Yeah. <laughs> Okay. Where you've got these monsters that are that are cyberpunk in theme, mm-hmm. um, that are sort of tracking and haunting you as you go throughout this this piece, and there's lore oh. behind why and everything like that that you're there and stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, so we just released that recently. It's up okay. on our our, our drive through RPG uh, page, right? Um, and then we have the second installment of of Monsters and Man mm. uh, coming out here very soon, probably by the end of the year. Sure, uh, we're going to have that ready, and it'll be up for it. Um, that's the second part of a three part series that we're doing as as sort of our introduction to uh, the world, mm. how the mechanics work, things like that for it. Very cool. Yeah, nice. Um, and then finally, I, I'm going to kind of sign up my my partner for this too but we always do a, a special merry heismas episode mm-hmm. every year of our stream games and stuff like that um and so uh and then we release it out as a module out mm-hmm. there um and so uh i think we usually release it for like a buck 99 or something like that it's like a one-shot kind of thing yeah but it's a holiday themed cyberpunk heist yeah <laughs> what more could you want <laughs> exactly exactly <laughs> nice well uh Mallow, thank you so much for joining us to talk about Identico. Thank you for having me. That was a blast. Absolutely. Uh, could you remind everyone where they can find you online? So you can find us online uh, either at Identico or at Humanoid Games. Okay. Very cool. Again, thank you so much for joining us for this special episode live from Mechaticon, uh, the 2023 uh, convention. And thanks to everyone for tuning in. 
Don't forget to check out the special stuff that's coming up for Identico uh, by the end of this year. We'll have links in the show notes for all of that. So head on over there right now. We'll see you next time, everyone. Call to watch action. Yeah, like that. All right. This is the part where we normally banter back and forth about what we thought about yeah. the game, but I have not heard the recordings yet. So nope. uh, <laughs> feel free to banter with yourself. <laughs> yeah. So so this was the first recording in the Catacon that we had done, and I was able to score the uh, the pri- one of the private rooms uh, for this recording. Nice. So we didn't have a ton of background noise uh, in it. We had a little bit because the LARPers that had uh, finished halfway through our recording uh, were like, let's celebrate in the hallway uh, and talk real loud. And... It's fine. It made it more authentic, mm-hmm. whatever. Uh, but I had a lot of fun. It felt really official, like interviewing people in person. Uh, and uh, Sean uh, or Mallow was uh, just fantastic uh, as a guest. Uh, I had done a panel with Mallow previously, uh, an impromptu panel, um, mind you. I wasn't scheduled to be on the panel, but I, I decided to step up and be on that panel anyway. Um, and, and he was, uh, really enthusiastic about this game and I had played it once before. It might've even played it with him previously, but it was, uh, I think for a charity thing, I had played it and I had played a, uh, what I come known as a Rover, which is, uh, the guy in the van controlling a ro- giant robot, mm-hmm. I guess. Um, but uh, this this was a really cool uh, experience learning about the rest of the world because in that one shot, we were like contained to a city and that's all I kind of really knew about the game. Right. Like very cyberpunky, very tropey, whatever. But to find out that half of the game is designed around the, like this wild west atmosphere outside of the big cities... Yeah. And how it kind of blends those two worlds together was fascinating. Like it's it's a nice it's a nice take on the cyberpunk genre, which kind of felt a little like cyberpunk red was, which mm-hmm. had like those like city hubs yeah. and like the the wastelands between. But the the wastelands here were much more defined and lived in and m- more part of the experience than it felt cyberpunk red kind of got into. Yeah. So. uh, Hopefully everybody enjoyed the episode and can check out the game. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, They've got some fun stuff coming up. So check that out uh, if you're able to. Uh, But before we let you go for the day, we do have our calls to action. If you like what we're doing on the show and you want to support us, there are a number of ways to do that. The most effective way to help us out is to stop on over to our Patreon and sign up. Everyone gets access to our weekly chit chats, but at the $5 and up level, you get dice, bonus episodes, personal thank you card, and more. And at the $10 levels, you're also joining our sticker of the month club where we send out stickers based on our series or our show in general. Um, Mm -hmm. If you sign up sooner rather than later, though, you will get access to all of our older stickers as well while supplies last. Um, I will send you everything we've created so far to catch you up. It's Um, a lot at this point. Yeah, I think it's like seven designs, Mm -hmm. maybe. Mm -hmm. Um, So you can check that out by going to our Patreon at patreon.com slash character creation cast. You can also help us out by leaving a rating and review on Apple Podcasts, Podchaser, Podcast Addicts, or even Facebook, or just talk about the show on social media or our Discord server after listening. You can join our Discord for free at discord.charactercreationcast.com or gain access to exclusive channels through our Patreon, where sometimes I hold Q&A segments, ask for hype coup prompts or any other number of fun things uh, primarily with our patrons so it's a a fun place to be it is you answered a lot of questions while you're driving to Ohio I did (laughs) I did I I had so much time I woke up from my like nap that day and I was like okay well I am (laughs) not gonna read all that (laughs) Uh it was a lot 
Um, since things have been pretty hectic lately, we don't have too many other announcements for today's episode. Um, if you have some extra time, you can check out some other shows on the network if you have a chance. Mystery County is ramping up for their season three finale, so you'll get to hear what Ryan's been editing for the tail end of that season. Um, there's also all of the latest one-shot episodes that are going to be determining the next host of that podcast to replace our podcast overlord, James D'Amato, mm-hmm. so he can focus on the network as a whole, um, as well as campaign and writing and raising a child and having a dog and a cat and a spouse. Um, <laughs> he's very busy. So it's very busy. Yeah. You can, you can check out some of the other shows on the network. There's a lot of great stuff there. Absolutely. Uh, But before we let you go for the day now, we've got to personally thank all of the wonderful folks that are able to support the show through our Patreon. So uh, without further ado, uh, as always, first off off the bat, thank you to Lieutenant and DJG, a.k.a. Tigranosaurus. Thank you to Eric Bontz and Daryl Holiday. You are helping to make all of this possible. Shadim Cabal and the Shyest Barbarian, we appreciate your support. Thank you. Benjamin Sweeney and Lorcan McGinnis, thank you for helping us out. Rob Fletcher and Kevin Brown, you're the best. Thank you. Tentacle Duck and Cole McCallum, thank you both so much. Thank you to John Adamus and the Lazy Lava's Livid Lament featuring the lackadaisical loot-loving lemur. <laughs> we couldn't do this without you. Carlos Salazar and Eric S., thank you for your continued support. Ross Kingston and Yit Panbayer, thanks for your continued support as well. Soragoth and Liam G., thank you so much for being part of this. Brian Colm and Garden GM, thanks for supporting our dreams. Dark Mirror and Tom, thank you for helping us make this show. Blue Kryptonite and Danny, thanks for your continued support. Nicole Trainer and Liam Murray, thank you for believing in us. Thanks to Satwan Kangura and Kenning. So glad to have you backing us. And Brian Kurtz, thank you. And thank you to all of our future patrons. Your support really does help us out with the production of the show and allows us to offer all the cool stuff we are offering on our patron to our patrons every single month. That's it for today's episode. You can join us next time where Ryan sits down with one of our patrons mentioned above, Carlos Salazar, Mm -hmm. uh, to discuss and make characters for the alpha version of his new game, Under and Above. Stay tuned for that. Until then, take care, everyone. Stay safe, drink some water, and keep making those amazing people. We'll see you next time. Character Creation Cast is a production of the One Shot Podcast Network and can be found online at www.charactercreationcast.com. Head to the website to get more information on our hosts, this show, and even our press kit. Character Creation Cast can also be found on Twitter and Blue Sky at CreationCast or on our Discord server at discord.charactercreationcast.com. I'm one of your hosts, Ryan Bolter, and I can be found on Twitter and Blue Sky at Lord Neptune or online at lordneptune.com. Our other host, Amelia Antrim, can be found on Twitter and Blue Sky at Ginger Reckoning. Music for this episode is used with a Creative Commons license or with permission from the podcast they originated from. Further information can be found within the show notes. Our main theme music is Hero Remix by Steve Combs and is used with a Creative Commons license. This podcast is owned by us under Creative Commons. This episode was edited by Ryan Bolter. Further information for the game systems used and today's guests can also be found in the show notes. If you'd like to support our show, find us on Patreon. Get access to bonus episodes, exclusive merch, and much more at patreon.com slash character creation cast. Thanks for joining us. And remember, we find that the best part of any role-playing game is character creation. So go out there and create some amazing people. We'll see you next time.